If you look at this picture, you know exactly where I am, don't you? Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I want to ask you a question. What would Anaheim, California be identified for if not for Disneyland? Could you think of Florida without oranges? How about Madison County without bridges? Today on the county seat, we are going to talk about iconic identifiers and how important they are to communities and what kind of challenges a community or a county faces if they are threatened with losing what they're known for. Well, we are going to start this by taking a look at this as a case study, Tooele County, home of the uh, Bonneville Salt Flats, home of Miller Motorsports Park, known as the fastest place on earth. Yet both of those identities are currently under threat. Well, we're going to start this by taking a simple geography quiz. What is the most recognized thing in Grand County? Okay. Well, what about Carbon County? What is it known for? What feature in Tooele County is world famous? You know the answers? How'd you do? Well, what happens when the one thing your county is known for is about to be lost? If you were a county leader, how far would you go to protect the county cornerstone? That is a question that several commissioners never thought they would be faced with just three short years ago. Washington County never thought they would be discussing how to force the national parks to stay open. Carbon Emory and Sevier counties never thought they would be trying to secure an export terminal in another state to be able to sell local coal. And Tooele County would never have imagined that they would have a world-class Formula One race course on their hands, not to mention see the fastest place on earth turning to mud. In the last 36 months, Utah counties have had to take extraordinary and controversial measures to protect the very thing that they are known for. Tooele County has been hit with a one-two punch, starting with the sudden withdrawal of the Miller family from the Motorsports Park property in Tooele County. The county owns the land, and now the world-class race facility on it. The county commission is faced with protecting the asset and over 200 jobs while they're finding a suitable buyer. Their decision has met with controversy and a court order as well. The bid from a foreign investor committed to develop and continue running the facility was not the most expensive bid in sale price, but the commission contends it was still the best offer. So we could go after a short-term solution, which absolutely was more money right now today, but what the county commission and our advisors believed universally, we were unanimous, was that the offer we chose was the absolute best one over the long term. And we wanted that for our community, long-term success, rather than something short that we could burn through in just one year. Just as the racetrack regained momentum, the raceway at the Bonneville Salt Flats has come to a halt. It is getting harder for racers to find enough of the super hard surface to race at world record speeds. Those vehicles have all gone other places because the space to run at the Bonneville Salt Flats is not big enough for them anymore. The damage has come from decades of pumping brine off the flats to extract potash without the salt being returned to the racing side of the flats. One percent of that ton is sold. The other 99 percent is waste product that gets spread on the south side. Additionally, a large berm keeps brine from laying out evenly, creating a concrete-like layer of salt. Engineers now feel that if the loss of the salt on the famed salt flats is not reversed immediately, that the flats and a world-renowned racing tradition could be lost forever. So that is our course syllabus for today's county seat. Now that we have a look at exactly what has led to this place, what is the path forward? That'll be the focus of our show going forward on the county seat. We'll be right back. 149 million years in the making, dinosaurs once roamed this land. Now they're found at the Dinosaur National Monument. Let's take you beyond the bones. We call it Dinosaur Land. You'll find it offers adventures and sights not seen anywhere else in the world. Come to Dinosaur Land, Vernal, Utah. You'll want to stay forever. The dinosaurs did. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Falls. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No 
matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. What do you picture when you hear Rich County, Utah? Bear Lake Adventure? Snowmobile action? Pristine skiing? Spectacular solitude? Well, if that isn't what first came to mind, then you just don't know Rich County. The Bear Lake Monster Polar Plunge. Snowmobiling Monte Cristo. Ice fishing Bear Lake. Skiing the backcountry. Fishing at the Cisco Disco. Come and find out what you never knew you were missing. Rich County, Utah. Beautiful scene, isn't it? The great wide spaces of the wild, wild west. Hi, I'm Chad Booth, host of At Your Leisure. I'm asking you to support the Blue Ribbon Coalition. Their efforts responsibly preserve access to our public lands. If it were not for the Blue Ribbon Coalition and their efforts, you may not have access to millions of acres of land across the West. This is America's playground, and if we don't do anything, we are going to lose it. Join, participate, and donate. Welcome back to the county seat. We are in Wendover, Utah at the uh, Wendover and Tooele County Office Complex for our show today on county's involvement in infrastructure. We're actually talking about Miller Motorsports Park and the Bonneville Salt Flats. Joining us for this part of the conversation on the Salt Flats is Dennis Sullivan, who is the uh, president of the Utah uh, Salt, Flats, Salt Racing. Flats Racing Association and the Save the Salt Alliance, which is the group that is trying to help work towards finding a preservation of salt flats. The mayor of Wendover, Utah, Mike Crawford, and Tooele County Commissioner Sean Mill. Thank you for taking the time out of your day for this conversation. So I, I want to start this conversation by saying we, we now understand the kind of the history of how the, the salt got to the condition that it is and that there's, there's not a finger to point. It's just kind of a, a, a series of circumstances that led to this. I think the important thing is to talk about exactly how key the preservation and restoration of the salt is, because you'll each see it from a slightly different perspective. I'll start with you, Dennis. From your, from your world, this is probably the most important thing in the world, isn't it? Yes, it is. Uh, it's the only place like this in the whole world. Uh, there is one other place in Australia, but you have to travel 120 miles on a dirt road to even get to it. So this is the only place that's like this that people can do this. They've been setting records on the salt flats since 1914. Uh, we have organized events since 1949. Uh, so it's, it's got a history. From your perspective, as the closest city to the salt flats, how important is the preservation of the racing portion of the salt flats to, to Wendover? Well, Wendover as a whole, are connected to the salt flats in many, many ways. First off, it's part of our history. We've been an integrated part from the very first. From 1949, the, the racers had to utilize Wendover because we're over 100 years old, so we've been every step of the way with the racers. Um, it's an icon for our community. It's, it's just part of us. It's ingrained. Um, I've actually uh, grew up in Wendover and have very good relationships with the racers that would come once a year. You'd always look forward to them coming. And the salt flats has really developed into quite the economic um, stabilizer for the Wendover, Utah side. Uh, Nevada, of course, has its gambling. And we rely um, from the racers not only for an identity, but also, you know, um, the extra tourism it does bring to our town. So it, it's kind of in our blood, and we've, we're, we're connected whether we disagree with different stuff and that, but we're very connected. So it would be of value to you to maintain, but not at all expense? Well, I'm not, well, I think for the town, the salt flats need to be maintained because, like he said, it's, it's, it's an identity. But what we've got to do is we've got to use some science. I, I just have to walk a path because I'm a non-racer. So, I mean, racing isn't everything to me, but the racers do matter. Um, the salt flats as a whole is 100 square miles, and we want to preserve it the best way we can because... You know, we want to take care of our backyard. We don't want to, you know, this is where we play, this is where you grow up, this is where you take your kids, this is your home. So you, you want it to be preserved. Well, Sean, what kind of an impact um, would this have for the county? I mean, your, your branding is kind of in the process of being identified. You're kind of tied up in this. Absolutely. This is as much for our county, uh, the salt flats, as delicate arches for the state. Uh, for us, this is, uh, as you've mentioned, it's, a, it's an icon. Uh, as the fastest place on earth, kind of county that we are, uh, this, this ties right into it. And just like 
Mill Motor Sports Park, Utah Motorsports Campus as it's being rebranded now today, uh, th this defines who we are uh, as far as our tourism push goes. Is there a path out of this? I, I mean, is, 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 there, is there a way that there's a win-win situation that can be built where the, where the mine operators who are, you know, leaching the, the potash off of the brine, the racers, the historians, everybody comes out a winner? The potash only accounts for approximately less than 5% of what's taken off. The salt itself is basically a, a waste product for this mining company. Uh, it sits in, in tailing ponds over there on the south side of the freeway. Uh, based on their 2008 document, mining document, just in one pond alone, Pond 5, there's 116 million tons of salt. And if you extrapolate that out over the rest of the drying ponds, it's in excess of 200 million tons of salt sitting on the south side. And we feel if we could get that moved to the north side, that would be a tremendous benefit. So where's the lack of will here? I mean, you know, the BLM's got a berm out there that supposedly, as I understood from the tour we took last fall, is affecting water flow out uh, onto the salt flats and concentrating the brine on the wrong side of the berm. But you've also got to get some, some buy-in from, from uh, Intrepid to put brine back out there. You've got to have the will and resolve of local leaders to support the state. It's, you know, wh how does that path work? You, you know, wh where, do, where does everybody's role fit in this? I think that's the nature of the question and the debate right now is how can we coordinate to make sure that everybody gets a win-win, as you put it? So um, is, is that, does the state proclamation help? Certainly, this, I think it helps. Yeah, state proclamation is a message from the, from the state of Utah's legislature saying they would like to see it done. Because it's federal land, it doesn't carry weight of a law. But we are in the process of putting together a legislative proposal to go to the federal level. The state resolution will be the lead-in document. We have been working with a mining, or I mean, excuse me, an engineering company, Bingham Engineering, who were the engineers of the first uh, laydown that was done in 1997 of salt return back. Um, they've been working with us with some recommendations. We're not going to go back to the BLM and say, this is how you have to do it. We're going to go back and say, this is what we want. This is kind of a time frame. And oh, by the way, here's some suggestions. And that's what we've taken from the from the engineering group. Uh, we don't want the mining industry to go out of business. They own most of the salt. Uh, they have a, uh, in their mining leases, they have to do a reclamation. We'd like them to start that reclamation now instead of waiting till 30 years when they're done mining because there won't be anything left by then as far as racing surface or the thin halite surface that, that we're interested in. When you talk to the geologists, they'll tell you that the salt surface is still there, hasn't changed. The geologists are looking at everything from the clay plata up, which includes salt mud, includes gypsum, and, and things like that. As far as racers and as far as the pure white look, that comes from the pure halite that's on top. And is that the hardest surface? Yes. It's the most packed. I think what they also got to do is we've got to quit focusing so much on the past. We got to basically accelerate to the future. I, a lot of people are trying to point fingers and that's taking a lot of the uh, resources away. And so from now we just need to get a, a solid plan and try to make it implement and start to go. Um, the, the Alliance has actually been one of the better groups. Save the Salt was an interesting group to work with because they were tend to be a little more um, higher level and didn't like to work on a local level where the, uh, the Salt Flats Alliance is a little more local and that's why we finally came together. So, so are, you, are you all on the same page, county, city, and, and that, that a, a team effort between all of you is the best way to get to this? Oh, absolutely. Team effort yes. is, is the only way it's going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, very good. We are going to take a quick break here from the county seat and we will come back. We'll continue on with our conversation about Miller Motorsports Park and how that plays an impact on the county. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. Commissioner Milne will come back and continue on in that segment. You're watching the county seat.
There is a place where looking out means looking in, where an impression lasting only a few seconds will be imprinted on a life forever, where courage is forged and innocence rediscovered, where remembering is rewarding and forgetting unforgettable. There is a place where truth is felt and where seeing is believing. There is a place. Shopping in Davis County has never been better. Experience Station Park, Northern Utah's premier gathering place for shopping, dining, and entertainment. With over 100 shops, Station Park is something for the whole family. Or explore the shopping possibilities this season under one roof at the Layton Hills Mall. Both are conveniently located north of downtown Salt Lake, just off I-15. Come take advantage of special discounts and a wide selection of stores. Visit PlayInDavis.com for more info. The Utah Farm Bureau has always been there to fight for the needs of its members. With discount programs on items ranging from vehicles and ATVs to health and wellness. The membership fees aren't big, but the results are. We've been around since 1916, and we're not leaving anytime soon. Utah Farm Bureau. We work for those who work to feed the world. Welcome back to the county seat. We are in Wendover, Utah. We are talking with Tooele County Commissioner Sean Mill. We'll continue our conversation about the county's relationship with problems of iconic infrastructure and how counties sometimes have to get involved. So we're going to shift our attention to the other part of the story, which is the Miller Motorsports Park. And this is, this is something for which the county is... Uh, struggle to find uh, the ability to tell its right story. So give me a little bit of background uh, from uh, your perspective on, on the situation with Miller Motorsports Park. First off, where are we today? Today we're in Wendover, Utah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> no, uh, as, far as, as far as where the motorsports Open for business. So races are on their mark. They've already had a couple of events. Uh, they'll continue having them all summer long. Uh, they're very pleased to announce, they being the property managers and marketers that we've, we've hired, that they've got a NASCAR event, they've got a Lucas Oil, uh, Lucas Oil off-road event, um, they've got uh, a world or at least national championship for a karting event. Um, they have uh, one of those kind of endurance races that uh, you know a lot of male bravado goes into uh, called the uh, you know, Bullfrog. Uh, endurance race, I believe, something of that nature. Uh, they're they're looking to make full use of the facility this year and uh, to keep it vibrant and alive. So, uh, jobs became part of this whole discussion because this, when the Miller family uh, abandoned the project and it fell to the hands of the county, um, it left a lot of people kind of in 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 a, in a limbo. So. How paramount was that to the decision-making process of the commission? Well, for us, it was the absolute most important. We wanted to make sure that we preserved the social welfare, if you will, of people being gainfully employed and being able to pay their bills and uh, a sense of pride that we all get from enjoying uh, our daily vocation. Uh, there were a number of people that specifically work for the Millers uh, at the facility. Those that were garage tenants, there were several businesses in those garage tenant spaces and they had employees. And then you look at the effect on lodging and retail and restaurants and uh, something of that nature not being open and a viable business anymore would be very detrimental to our local economy. So would, if, if, the, if the, the person who filed the lawsuit in this whole case had taken that bid when you originally made that decision, would, would that have affected the uh, immediate future of the, of the racetrack? It certainly could have. We had been told by a number of stakeholders that, you know, if there's going to be that kind of density of residential uh, construction right on the same property, uh, the, the future of this facility as a world-renowned racetrack is going to come to a close very soon. So, so do you mean it's kind of like the story about they the, the build the airport and it's there for years and then the houses move in around it and then they make the airport go away? Exactly. As a matter of fact, I, I grew up in another state and there was a, a hog farm not too far from one of the housing developments that I moved into. And uh, on the right kind of windy and muggy 
high humidity days, you could get an awful smell. And uh, a lot of us transplants coming into the area were not too keen on it. And I always thought, even as a teenager, that that wasn't a very uh, equitable thing to do, was to force them out. And unfortunately, the, the public clamor did grow to such a, uh, uh, such a level that local officials just felt uh, ultimately uh, necessary to do something about it and, and unfortunately that, that hog farm went somewhere else and uh, residential neighborhoods moved in even more so and yeah it's, it's exactly like that with the airport. You know it's there when you move in but afterwards um, it's all you can do to get rid of it. So if you, ha if you had to go through that whole process again, we, we, hadn't, we hadn't gone to court and they hadn't made their decision to rebid and do all the stuff would you come up, would your commission come up with the same uh, answer or same criteria? The same criteria on what we felt was most important and mm -hmm. to why we selected who we did? Absolutely. Would we go about the process differently knowing what we now know? Absolutely. And um, e even though we truly believe that we would win on appeal, it, it, it's irrelevant. We want, we didn't want to go through the one to two year process of an appeal and the expense of such. Uh, if we felt like, okay, we, we can just take our licks and uh, get back to the drawing board, we'll sharpen up our process, we'll make sure that we have a successful season this year so that it's not sitting derelict for uh, a year or two and um, lose value, right? But we'll, we'll sharpen our process again, we'll cross some T's and dot I's, uh, and we'll, we'll get it sold again. How big of an impact is this to, uh, to the county? Well, th that's the... That's the big question. If you're looking for a specific dollar amount, I can't give you that um, because it's, it's speculative uh, to some degree, but it's in the many millions of dollars annually. Mm -hmm. um, what it could be grows even more given the option that we wanted to select because they, they're interested in so much more than what the facility currently is and have the monetary wherewithal to do so. Th that that's where we get really excited about it and why that answer is so conclusively yes we'd still pick the same same party because of what it can be for our local community okay very good we can take a quick break we'll come back with a conversation about uh, Tooele County and its engagement in protecting the iconic landscape of the county here on the county seat we'll be back in just a minute Kanab base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. There's a little place Utah map where I was raised, where my heart's at, where the sagebrush grows wild and high, and the stars come out at night. Oh, there ain't nothing like being raised in the basin with the youth reservation, skin starvation, that Duchesne County life. If you are looking for the center of the universe, good luck. But if you are looking for the center of the off-road universe, look no farther than Paiute County. Hundreds of miles of trails turn your day of riding into a week, a month. Heck, a lifetime wouldn't be enough. Explore one of the most famous trail systems in the world, the Paiute Trail. Go rafting on the Severe River or go boating and fishing at Otter Creek and Paiute Reservoir. Explore Paiute County and discover the magic and beauty of the land where the rainbow ends. ATV, check. Four-wheel driving, check. Bouldering, check. Mountain biking, check. Hiking, check. River rafting, check. Adventure is about more than just crossing activities off of a list, but hey, if you can find a place that gives you everything you're looking for, all the better. In Emory County, you'll find the San Rafael Swell, trails, lakes, and the small town hospitality you're looking for. San Rafael Country, in the heart of Utah. Visit us and check something off your list. Welcome back to the county seat. We are talking about, uh, well, our, our case study has been Tooele County this week and the fact that it's very icon of being the fastest place on earth has been through kind of an upheaval the last couple of years with situation on the Salt Flats and the situation at the Miller Motorsports Park. Uh, 
do you feel that county leadership is in a comfortable position uh, where they are today as far as their engagement in all of this stuff? I know there are a lot of theory theoretical thoughts that surround that. What are your thoughts about it? Uh, county government is always a, a mixed bag. Today, where are we on those two particular subjects? Yeah, we feel that we've, we, we've got a good direction. Uh, we're working together with a bunch of different stakeholders when it comes to the, the salt flats and, and uh, as much as I'm impatient and would love an immediate solution to that, and I know they would as well, uh, we have to bring all those stakeholders to the table and, and create a solution that's, that's workable for everybody. Um, and likewise, it didn't just happen overnight, so it's not going to be a quick solution. Uh, same sort of thing with uh, the motorsports campus. It's, um, it's a big facility and it, it brings in a lot of revenue. Uh, during its events uh, in their season, and it's the same sort of thing. It's, it's had a 10-year history that has been very good economically for the county, um, understanding that you know, the previous owners uh, may have struggled uh, from what they consider to be successful, and our hope is that with the owners in the future here shortly, uh, they'll be able to take uh, whatever new ideas they have and and the, their business acumen and, and make it hugely successful and still consider uh, the, the jobs and the economic impact to our local community. Um, it, it's just, it's too important for it to, to not succeed. You know, you kind of alluded to this earlier in the conversation that, that, it, it, that from your perspective, it f almost falls under the health, safety, and welfare obligation of a county commissioner when a, a community and its, its very identity is, is threatened. Um, is that a correct assumption on my part? I think it's debatable whether or not it's an obligation. It's, it could certainly fall under that paradigm. However, um, you know, times change and you always have to reinvent yourself. We have to do it professionally as people. We have to do it, uh, you know, from youth to old age. Now, counties are not going to be any different, but you certainly s strive to hold on to what you're good at for as long as you can until you're compelled or forced into having to reinvent yourself. And uh, here we have the Salt Flats. It's, it's been what we've been known for since 1914, uh, certainly since the 40s. And, you know, as technologies change and how we get to and fro, that maybe that will change as well. But in the meantime, it's what we're good at. It's what we're known for. And we want to keep a hold of that branding for as long as is reasonable and uh, to our benefit. All right, very good. Commissioner, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting us into your homes for the county seat. Remember, you can find us online. Local government is where your life happens. Be part of the solution. We'll see you next week on the county seat. If you'd like to share this video with your friends, well, you do that right here. If you would like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, you do that over here. If you'd like to interact with us on the county seat, that happens over here. If you want to watch the next episode of the county seat, you can catch it Saturday night at 11 or Sunday morning at 8.30 on ABC4 Good For Utah.